Committee of the Whole, Olivier Midnight Trentay Sais, Nelly Hesla Turn Guahan, is called to order to honor the late Honorable Pilar Cruz Luhan, former Senator of Le Hesla Turn Guahan. The late Honorable Pilar Cruz Luhan will be escorted onto the steps of the Guam Legislature by the Guam Public Safety Officers. She will then be escorted into the Guam Congress Building and the Speaker Antonio R. and Pinko Legislative Session Hall by members of Imina Trentaisais and Lehesla Tuan Guahan. Please rise. <laughs>
Please remain standing as we begin with the presentation of colors by the Guam Public Safety Officer. call upon Mr. Peter Constantino and Mr. F. Glenn Lujan to lead in the singing of the national anthem and the Guam hymn. Twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave Of, for the recitation of Inifresi, will Senator B. Anthony Ada kindly lead us? Inifresi, Gini must tackle Gihinasoku, Gimas Taklum Gikurusonu, Zanamas Figo Nyanasanahu, 
who are first in my sizzle, but are by Protehi, Zen and Defendi, Ye Nengi, Ye Kutura, Ye Lenguahi, Ye Aidi, Ye Hanum, Zen Itanu Tsamoro, Nirian Shaku, Director as Duos Tata, Esti who are fit me, Gihilu Biblia, Zen Ibenderahu, Ye Banderan Guahan. Please remain standing for the exit of the color. Please remain standing for your, ben for your bendition by Leonard Iriarte. My daughter Gihit Gisen Hilo, Imanamkuna taught Lang Suha, Zaintina Iman Matau, Iman Mofen and Atautau, Niman Motugi Manfinet and a Sakman Siha. In Tina, my name is Mommy. In Tina, my name is Totlang Siha. I have got who gin in Hoga. No, 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 Na 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 na, na 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 na. I have got to get in Hoga. Na 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 na, na 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 na, na 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 na. I have got to get in Hoga. Na 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 na, na 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 na, na 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 na, na 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 na. Who hana magi? I call upon Reverend Father. Juni Valencia to deliver the invocation. Please remain standing. Let us put ourselves in the presence of God as we begin our prayer. Lord our God, we praise you for the gift of life you have given to the late Honorable Pilar Diaz Cruz Luján. Through her life and example, you have revealed to us the true character of unwavering faith, perseverance, and commitment to service. As we gather for this state memorial service, we first turn to you in thanksgiving for her life, her family, and her leadership. Be merciful to us and hear our prayers for Pilar. Bless her now and give her the reward for her faithfulness and good works. Bless her family, that they may receive the consolation they so desire during this time of loss. Be near them even now, O Lord, and give them the peace which only you can give. We thank you for the gift of life you have given her, her presence among us, and the many ways she taught us the importance of faith the treasure of our island culture, and the value of love and commitment to family and neighbors. Hear our prayers, Almighty Father, as we join our voices together and offer this prayer through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Eternal rest grant unto Pilar, O Lord. 
May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Please be seated. Legislative Secretary Senator Shelton, you are recognized to read resolution number 385-36 LS. Resolution number 385-36 LS introduced by Amanda L. Shelton, Tina Rose Munya Barnes, V. Anthony Ada, Frank Blas Jr., Joanne Brown, Christopher M. Duenas, James C. Moylan, Talina Cruz Nelson, Sabina Flores Perez, Clinton E. Rigel, Joe S. San Augustin, Tello T. Tidegui, Jose Pito Terlahi, Therese M. Terlahi, Mary Camacho Torres. Relative to posthumously recognizing and commemorating the late Honorable Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan, former Senator of Alejandro Turinguahan and educator for her contributions and services to Guam and its people and expressing condolences to her family on her passing on behalf of the people of Guam. Be it resolved by Imina Trentai Sais Nelahesla Turanguahan, whereas Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan was born on October 12, 1930, in Aganya, Guam, the second youngest child in a family of nine children of Jose Valenzuela and Josefa Diaz Cruz. Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan always yearned to further her prospects for the future in as many ways as possible on this small remote Pacific island of Guam, and she took her first step towards advancement when she graduated from George Washington High School in Mung Mung, Guam in 1951. And encouraged by high school teacher, Ms. Jean Bauer, Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan managed to obtain scholarships to attend Siena Heights College in Adrian, Michigan. There she was befriended by Sister Ellen Vincent, Sister Anne Hoakim, and others who positively influenced her goals for a bright future. And Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan graduated with a sense of fulfillment and obtained a Bachelor of Arts degree in secondary education from Siena Heights in 1955. And she began her career working as a teacher at St. Jude's School on Seven Mile East Road in Detroit, Michigan with her newly conferred education degree. And in mid-1956, Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan returned to Guam and worked as a teacher. She met Frank George Lujan and within a short period of courtship, they became engaged. It was then that her destiny as an accomplished island leader and future political player became her fate, as they, they both shared the same beliefs, goals, and prospects for a bright future for themselves and their island. And they both supported each other and encouraged the other so that dreams became reality and success easily captured. They were married on July 7, 1956, and she gave birth to a future lawyer Manessa in 1957, a future doctor, Davina in 1960, a future businessman, Galen in 1962. After the birth of her third child, Pilar was promoted to serve as assistant principal of East Barragata School in Radio Barragata, Guam, and to further their career opportunities and enrich their growing family, Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan and Frank George Lujan decided to pursue their Juris Doctorate and Master's degrees respectfully at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana. In 1966, Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan was conferred with the Master's of Science in Elementary School Administration. And shortly after, Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan gave birth to her youngest daughter and future government administrator, Rolenda 
With a Juris Doctorate and a Master's Degree in hand, Frank and Pilar returned to Guam to contribute to their growing island. And from 1967 through 1969, Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan served as the principal of Wedding Gale Elementary School in Dedido, Guam. And she came across many barriers due to the bureaucratic red tape of the Department of Education Administrative Division. With ideas and goals of her own, Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan decided to further pursue her career and became an administrator of the island's education system. Hence, she enrolled at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and came away with an education specialist degree in general school administration in 1970. And returning to the island, Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan was appointed to serve as an assistant superintendent of curriculum and instruction in 1970 and then was promoted to be the Associate Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction. And shortly after, she became a consultant in the bilingual education system for the Education and Human Resources Development Division in New York City in 1975. Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan assumed almost every level in the government of Guam education system, from teacher to the highest position to include being the acting director of education in 1976. She opted for early retirement after she put in place the Chamorro language and culture in the public school curriculum, implementing it in the elementary schools. And further on in her career in education, Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan became a Chamorro translator for the Guam Constitutional Convention and a Chamorro language instructor at the University of Guam from 1977 through 1979. Also contributing to the island's bilingual enrichment, Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan became a Chamorro newscaster with the public broadcasting radio station KGTF from 1976 through 1980, and a licensed educational research consultant from 1976 through 1982. And as a culmination of her education career, she was elected to serve as chairwoman of the first Board of Education in 1977, and as a stepping stone toward influencing the direction that the Department of Education and the island of Guam was heading toward, and with the encouragement from colleagues who were impressed with her vision, Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan took the plunge into politics and the late Honorable Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan served as a senator of the 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd Guam legislatures from 1983 through 1994. And as a senator, she chaired the Committee on Judiciary and Criminal Justice, Corrections, Economic Development, Housing and Community Development, and Federal and Foreign Affairs, and the Committee on Health, Welfare, and Ecology. And she is credited with introducing landmark legislation for Guam that became law, such as the establishment of the Supreme Court of Guam, the Frank G. Lujan Memorial Court Reorganization Act of 1992, the Crime Victims Bill of Rights, the Child Protective Act, the Child Abuse and Neglect Reporting Act, the establishment of the Judicial Building Fund to construct the Guam Judicial Center, the establishment of the Jury and Appointed Council Trust Funds, and the reactivation of the Criminal Injuries Compensation Commission. And the late Honorable Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan had also served as a member of the Commission on Self-Determination the Judicial Council, the Board of Law Examiners, the State Federal Assembly of Law and Justice, the Assembly on the Legislatures, the Economic Development and International Trade Committee of the Western Legislative Conference, and the Executive Committee on Land and Energy of the Western Legislative Conference. And upon retirement from the government of Guam, 
the late Honorable Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan served as the chairperson of the board of directors of the AB Wanpat International Airport Authority of Guam from 1995 through 2002. And those were momentous years that saw the airport authority go through its $247 million expansion project, which was the largest capital improvement project ever undertaken on Guam. And her dedication to public service did not wane after her service on the GIAA Board of Directors ended. As the late Honorable Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan joined the Government of Guam Association of Retired Persons as its chairwoman of the board and had served as a very active member in protecting its assets and improving services for the Manumco of Guam. And despite a hectic schedule and the constant requests for her assistance, the late Honorable Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan practiced impressive time management and contributed to social and civic organizations such as the Salvation Army, the Seroptimus International of Guam, the Guam's Women's Issues Task Force, the International Women's Club of Guam, the Phi Delta Kappa Society, the American Association of University Women, the Catholic Daughters of Americas, and multitude of other social and civic organizations. The late Honorable Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan credits her faith for enhancing and enriching her life with blessings and giving her the guidance to undertake numerous projects and career turns. In 2002, she was installed as the chairwoman of the Guam chapter of the Catholic Daughters of the Americas. And in that role and in dedication to Guam's patroness, Santa Maria Kamalan, she made it her mission to spearhead the inclusion of a reproduction of the Our Lady of Cameron icon at the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception located in Washington, DC. And on November 14, 2004, the Board of Trustees approved the project. On September 21, 2006, the project came to fruition where more than 100 pilgrims from Guam and around the country in the nation's capital for the historic enshrinement of Santa Maria Kamalan. And the late Honorable Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan had also spent much of her time with her four grandchildren, Maya, Anissa, Joseph, and Frank, and her four great-grandchildren, Kaya, Mayana, Cameron, and Tyler, teaching them the Chamorro customs and language. And she had involved herself in various civic and social organizations that required her experience and expertise to accomplish their mission. And the late Honorable Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan was a recipient of the 2015 Hostitia Award for her commitment and dedication in her service and support to improving Guam's judicial system. And the late Honorable Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan of Chalampago and formerly of Hagania passed away on June 12, 2022 at the age of 91. And in all her accomplishments, the late Honorable Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan contributes her success to her parents, husband, and children, and to all her impressive teachers, professors, and Catholic leaders that molded her character, influenced her morals, and enlightened her goals and vision. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Imini Trentai Sais Nalehes Latour and Guahan does hereby, on behalf of the people of Guam, posthumously recognize and commemorate the late Honorable Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan, former Senator of Ilehes Latour and Guahan, for her contributions and services to Guam and its people, and express condolences to her family on her passing on behalf of the people of Guam. And be it further that the speaker certify and the legislative secretary attest to the adoption hereof 
and that copies of the same be thereafter transmitted to Davina Lujan, to Galen Lujan, to Rolanda Lujan Fasamelli, to Maya Lujan Butcher, and to the Honorable Lourdes A. Leon Guerrero, E. Magahagan Guahan, duly and regularly adopted by Imeni Trentai Sai Snellahesletor in Guahan on the 17th day of June, 2022. I invite Legislative Secretary, Senator Shelton, our Majority Leader, Senator Nelson, and Minority Leader, Senator Duenas, to join me in presenting Resolution Number 385-36 LS. Call upon Imega Haga to present to present the governor's proclamation. I call upon Chief Justice F. Philip Carbazidu to present the Judicial Council Resolution, joined by members of the Judicial Council.
I invite Imaga Ahaga and the Chief Justice to join me in presenting the official wreath of Guam. I now call upon the Honorable Carl T. C. Gutierrez, former governor, to deliver the eulogy. Alpha day and good morning. I want to express my deep and sincere thanks to the Luhan children for giving me this opportunity to join in the celebration of your mom's life. Last Wednesday morning, I received a call from Dr. Davina Lujan thanking me for the thoughts and words I shared about her mom when I was on the K-57 show hosted by Mayor Jess Alec on K-57. Before she said much else, I mentioned to her that I was leaving the following Saturday to Davao, Philippines, to attend the Sunday inauguration of the Vice President, Sarah Duterte Carpio, and her sister, Irene Duterte, as mayor of Davao. Davina expressed disappointment that I was not going to be here for today's service, but again thanked me for my expression of love for her mom. After a few more pleasantries were exchanged, she and I ended our conversation. Almost instantly after hanging up the phone, I had this unsettling feeling I just could not shake. I could just imagine Pilar pinching me and saying, Alpha, in a sokuna gang sit in the doors, stay it timu. Within a couple of minutes of hanging up with Davina, I called her right back and said I will cancel my trip to the ball, and I asked her to please let me know if there was anything else I could do for the family. I was so touched by the sincere appreciation I could feel radiating from Davina's voice. She then conveyed her family's request that I eulogize their mom during her state funeral. And of course, I was very, very honored. You have already heard the reading of the legislative resolution, which recounts the many accomplishments, leadership positions, titles, and contributions of the late Pilar Diaz Cruz Lujan. I won't repeat that admirable litany of accolades of which Pilar had many. There may be a couple that I might repeat, but it didn't come from research, it just comes from memory. After all, I've been still standing here today at almost 81, and that's what you want to hear, right? It's that little, the nuances of knowing Pilar and what went on in our lives here in the legislature. But I'll spend a few minutes sharing with you my memories of Pilar working alongside her as a colleague in the legislature, of the friendship we shared, of the laughs we had, and of the ways in which she and I contributed to each other's work. I first met Pilar during the 1970 campaign season. Her husband, Frank, was running for a seat in the legislature, and I got actively involved in campaigning for the Democratic slate of candidates. I recall that Frank Lujan and Francisco Rivera Santos, better known as Jippers, who were both running for senator, teamed up for canvassing and pocket meetings, and they were dubbed the Bobsy Twins that year. 
That was the first time getting involved in a campaign, and honestly, I have not stopped since. Can you believe that? It was that campaign that sparked my own aspirations in politics, and it was also that campaign that introduced me to the Lujan family, a family that would go on to serve our island community in so many capacities to this day. Although I had known Pilar since 1970, having worked closely with her husband Frank in the legislature and during the 1977 CONCON, my closeness with Pilar really developed a few years later, thanks to her nephew and my party, the late Tommy Okada, who was the son of Pilar's sister. I was a senator by then, and my party Tommy took me to his family activities often told me his auntie Pilar was considering running for a seat in the 17th Guam legislature, and he wanted to make sure we joined forces and shared our base of support. I was younger than Pilar by 11 years. Although she was not quite a full generation above me, I regarded her as my elder in many ways. She was like that big sister who always watched out for me. Pilar was definitely from that generation for whom being respectful and respectable was of the utmost importance. Everything about her exuded respect. Pilar and I were both elected to the 17th Guam legislature in 1982. Although I was now in my fifth term as a senator, Pilar was a newcomer. The Democrats came in with a super majority of 14 out of 21 that year. When I think about those early days when we served together, the legislature, I cannot think of Pilar without thinking of the late Senator Bill Oriola and my forever partner, John Perry Zogon. Those two women leaders quickly became our allies, beginning with our very first caucus after the 1982 election. I convinced them to support me for the speakership, and I in turn supported them for their causes. Both in caucus and on the session floor, Pilar was smart, educated, well-informed, persuasive, and effective all without a single ounce of harshness, brashness, or underhandedness. If ever there was a person who epitomized the adage, you can catch more flies with honey than with vinegar, it was Pilar. Make no mistake, however, Pilar was neither naive nor a pushover. She was effective in moving her agendas forward with class and grace. By comparison, I have been told that I sometimes take the vinegar approach. In the years that we served together, Pilar took it upon herself to cool me down. I recall one instance when during a caucus things got particularly heated between me and another colleague whose identity will be known only by those who were there. Let's just say tempers rose to some physicality and the other individual tumbled or perhaps was pushed over and fell on Pilar and Bill Ariola. From that moment on, those two women planted themselves beside me if ever they felt like a storm was brewing. I'm sure I was the subject of more than a few of Pilar's and Bell's prayers. I have no doubt that I was the beneficiary of the direct line I believe they each had to God. Pilar affectionately called me Catlito and frequently pinched me on my side inconspicuously as a reminder to cool my jets. And I'm sure Governor Lou would love to have her here today. (laughs) Much the same way every Chamorro mother I know has subtly pinched her child who was misbehaving in public. I can still hear her voice saying to me, I adekat litu todu unna sustuham nados, loosely translated, said I always gave her and Belle anxiety when I was charged up. But I must say that my very first impression of Pilar, even before I came to know and appreciate her intelligence and her great heart and passion for public service, the very first thing that struck me about her was that she was always, and I mean always, impeccably put together. In all the decades I knew Pilar, through, the, through all the official travel we took together, even after 22 hours on a plane to Washington, D.C., even in her later years of life, never once did I see Pilar 
without perfectly coiffed hair, a beautifully coordinated outfit and accessories, usually a silk scarf tied elegantly around her neck, and that slight half smile like Mona Lisa. Pilar did not carry herself this way because she was showy or materialistic or vain. Far from it. Rather, she simply took pride in herself, and she always presented herself as a woman to be reckoned with, and indeed she was. I fondly recall several instances of traveling together on official business to our nation's capital. On at least one occasion, she and I were hosted by renowned DC attorney and one time head of the DC Bar Association, attorney Tim May of Patton Box. We dined at the famous Prime Rib, the favorite dining spot for all the who's who in DC politics. I believe Davina may have been in attendance with us. with that dinner, along with my legal counsel, Mary Eva Cannon. With Pilar's elegance, poise, and impeccable style, no matter, no member of the Washington elite in the restaurant that night could hold a candle to our very own Miss Guam, as I opened called her, which, by the way, she got a great kick out of. Whenever we were in D.C. area, Pilar would also accompany me to my Mary, the Maryland home of my older sister, Rosie, who was Pilar's contemporary. Pilar was very much a part of our family. During my years as governor, Pilar remained a close confidant and ally. Although she was no longer a senator by then, she served our island in various other roles. As chairperson of the Guam International Airport Board, overseeing the biggest expansion improvement project in Guam, she also served as chairperson of the Board of St. Bishop Manamco, or SPIMA. I remember thanking Pilar after the hard fought 1994 gubernatorial election and telling her that as far as I was concerned, this was not my governorship. It was our governorship. The governorship of all of us who worked hard for the chance to better serve our people. There were many instances during my two terms as governor when Pilar would make good on my word to her that this was indeed our governor. Carlito, we need to do this. Carlito, we need to do that. And I trusted and respected her tremendously. So she almost always got whatever action she was advocating for. I recall one instance. It must have been when she chaired the SPEMA board. She called me up, furious because the legislature, the legislature was trying to deappropriate the supplemental annuity for the retirees, which was $4,238. You guys are young, but don't get back to that situation again. She told me to come to the SPEMA office there by the Ghana mayor's office. She pled her case convincingly, and she had each of the retirees who were there plead their case as well. At the end of the meeting, right there on the spot, I drafted executive order in my own handwriting. Executive order number 2001-29 calling for the retirement fund to approve this benefit to the retirees along with the 1,100 COLA. I recently found a copy of my handwritten executive order and shared it with Pilar's children. That order was 100% thanks to your mom. I did not go to that meeting with the intention of doing this, but by the end of the meeting, thanks in large part to Pilar's tenacity and influence, I was moved to act on the spot. Pilar made a very convincing case. Her late husband Frank and her daughter, the late Supreme Court Justice Monessa G. Lujan, may have been lawyers in the family, but I have no doubt that Pilar could have been quite successful in the courtroom if she was so inclined. As much as I believe Pilar knew she could count on me, I also knew I could count on her. One example that stands out in my mind was when she agreed to step up and run for chair of the Democratic Party of Guam. This was 1995, my first year as governor. Factions and fractures and the never sunshiners were hanging up their, you know, our armory and ready to go after us, which to me signaled challenges to the work my team and I were committed to doing. We knew we needed someone at the head of our party who would not splinter us further. We saw in Pilar just that person. We approached her about it, 
and she accepted the challenge without hesitation. Pilar handily won the chairmanship of the party and proudly led the Guam delegation to Chicago for the 1996 Democratic National Convention. In my opinion, she saved the party from a near certain break. There was no mistaking that Pilar was a woman of character. Even though she often joked that I made her nervous when I would engage in political battles, she herself was never one to cower if there was a cause or an effort she believed in. Another attribute of our Pilar that always stood out to me was her faith. She was a proud and devoted Catholic, and she walked the talk, as they say. Pilar and my wife, Jerry, shared a deep love for Santa Maria and Camelin, and that when the opportunity arose to give our island patroness a niche in the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, D.C., Pilar eagerly and passionately poured herself into making that dream a reality. Pilar was chair of the Guam chapter of the Catholic Daughters of the Americas at that time. In that capacity, she worked feverishly alongside the community members, including my wife, Jerry, my cousin, Loling Sauter, and Monsignor James Beneventi, and others. Finally, the years-long effort became a reality in 2006, when over 100 of our faithful flew to Washington from Guam and around the country for the enshrinement of the replica of our beloved Santa Maria and Camelin. Of all the many reasons Pilar had flown to Washington over the decades, I have no doubt that this trip to Washington was the most meaningful to her. Pilar lived through hardships and loss in her long life. As a child during the Japanese occupation, as an adolescent rebuilding her life in post-war Guam, as a tenacious young woman determined to seize every opportunity to work hard for her dreams, and as a wife who lost her husband, a mother who lost her child. Through all these struggles, Pilar never crumbled. She persevered for 99, 91 blessed years. She continued to be poised, dedicated, passionate, faithful person that she always was. To those of you who knew her best will tell you that it was her deep faith and sustain, that sustained and fueled her. And now that she has left this life, I know that together with Frank and Vanessa, she is looking with pride on her three children who remain and her treasured grandchildren. And I know for certain that she can rest easy because she left in each of you a legacy of service to our Guam community through your individual gifts and callings, something that both she and your dad, Frank, were so passionate about. Dr. Davina, to the level of care you, you give to every patient whose life you touch and in to improving the quality of health services in Guam, and to you, Galen, for, through your entrepreneurship, and Rolinda, as one of my three favorite marketing people at the airport. You've done your mom and dad and Monessa proud. I would like to close by reading a quote I came across which goes like this. I found it at GVB, by the way. Elegance is a glowing inner peace. Grace is an ability to give as well as to receive and to be thankful. Mystery is a hidden laugh always ready to surface. Glamour only radiates if there is a sublime courage and bravery within. This to me epitomizes Pilar. Elegant, graceful, sublimely brave and courageous, true class. I am so grateful to have had her as a colleague and a sounding board, and as a friend. Davina and Melissa, Galen and Banji, Rolinda and Tana, and your children and grandchildren. On behalf of Auntie Jerry, our family, and every grateful and a very grateful island, we offer you our prayers, love, and deepest condolences. Adios, Pilar. Goodbye, who not who's to all talu. Zangin Timpoku, put for board. Danya dan si Bel dan si Parin Tommy don halazu halum put favor to sight. I now invite Imagat Haga, our Chief Justice and members of Amina Trente Saisna Lehesa Tuan Guahan, 
our honored guests and friends, to bid farewell to the late Honorable Pilar Cruz Lujan, former Senator of Viles La Torre and Guajan.
I will now call upon the Reverend Father Juni Valencia to deliver the benediction. Please rise. Merciful Father, you have blessed us with the gift of the life of the late Honorable Pilar Diaz Cruz Luján. We praise and thank you for her leadership, her commitment to your people, her strong faith and devotion to our island people's patroness, Santa Maria Kamalin, and the many gifts and talents you have blessed her with. We ask that you show us now how to best follow in her example. As we go forth, we ask that you grant Pilar eternal joy in your kingdom, where we hope one day to be reunited with her. We ask that you bless her family with wisdom and unity that they may go forth from this memorial with your divine assistance and protection of body and soul. Finally, we ask your blessing upon all of us gathered here, that as we commend the soul of your daughter Pilar to your merciful hands, may we always honor her memory and so imitate her example of integrity and good stewardship. We ask this through Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. As we go forth from this place, we call to mind the words of Saint Cyprian, bishop and martyr. Let us then remember one another, united in mind and heart. Let us pray without ceasing, you for us, we for you. By the love we share, we shall thus relieve the strain of these great trials. Eternal rest grant unto Pilar, O Lord, May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thank you, Father. Please be seated. Senator and Majority Leader Senator Nelson, you are recognized. Madam Speaker, notwithstanding the House rules, I move to recess and reconvene the Committee of the Whole tomorrow, June 22nd at 6 p.m. On that motion, are there any objections? Seeing no objection, motion carries. We are in recess until tomorrow, 6 p.m. <laughs>